Welcome back to the channel guys, happy Friday, hope everyone's doing well. Today is the second part of my Master the Mesh series, which is kind of designed to help you get the best out of Meshtastic. Um, for those of you who don't know, Meshtastic is an off-grid messaging system um, which allows you to send encrypted messages between each other um, without the internet and everything else. There's loads of videos on this, go check out some of my previous ones, I'll leave some links in the description. But for those of you who are into Meshtastic and you've kind of dipped your toe in and you want to kind of learn more about it, that's what this series this series is for you basically and the purpose of this is to enhance your meshtastic experience so you can get the best out of it because meshtastic is quite a complex hobby you know you've got radio elements to it you've got you know electronics elements and you've also got you know software and firmware kind of you know elements to it as well so Hopefully this will help. So today we're going to be looking at map tools, in particular one excellent system which I use day to day um, and that is Liam Cottrell's maps. So let's dive in and have a look at that. So this is Liam Cottrell's open source Meshtastic map and basically what this does is it takes information from internet connected nodes and puts them on a map so you can actually sort of see what's going on on the mesh. Now the beauty of this is it allows you to actually kind of just look at different nodes on a map that are connected um, and see what's going on. So you can use this for like kind of diagnosing problems and, and working out if messages are getting to where they're supposed to be getting. So let's just dive in and look at the features first and I'll show you how, how you can kind of set this up. So for example if you click on this node here, this is my Hartford node, um, Hartford Omni, and we just tap on this, it shows you all the information. So don't take any notice of this four days ago updated because I think there might be some sort of um, weird issue going on here. It says disconnected as well, but it's not. Um, so if you click on the details of the node here, you can see all the information. You can see it's a, a Raspberry Pi Pico, you can see it's in router mode, um, all controversial, um, and it's all its stats and everything else, which is pretty cool. It also shows um, some trace routes here as well, like one I've done three hours ago um, and everything else. But what's really cool about this is you can actually tap into what my node sees on the mesh. So in real time, information messages coming in. If we click on this gated messages thing here, you'll see a message history, which is kind of cool because you can basically just dive into this and just see what's going on in an area. So you can see here we've got um, a bunch of our local stations. I'll have to vet this first before <laughs> before I kind of um, put this out to make sure there's nothing dodgy on it. Um, <laughs> Because <laughs> the conversations are, are pretty funny, actually. They go on to like you know early hours of the morning. It's just quite quite hilarious. Um, but you can see here, um, you know, lots of lots of different stations. Um, shout out to you boys on the mesh. It's it's been a right laugh lately. So that's pretty cool. Um, now you know why would you want to do this? It's meant to be an off grid system, and you know we don't really want all this stuff on the internet well okay look at the moment we're sort of in the early days of, of kind of working this whole system out um so it's good to have a system where some of the nodes are kind of online and they can sort of send information to a central server that everybody can see and then you can basically just you know work out if your messages are getting out there so say for example like you were over here with one of these stations just pick this one at random um Obviously, he's not connected. They, they'll show green if they're actually connected to the MQTT, um, this server, which I'll come on to in a minute. But basically, if you were this station and you wanted to find out, if you sent a message, is it actually getting to, to Hartford? You could find that out quite easily by just going into this panel here, um, clicking on gated messages and see if you know, your message has appeared there. So it's a good way of checking, double checking whether your message has arrived at the place you want it to. And then from there, you can work out, you know, why it hasn't. If it hasn't, um, you can do something to your antenna or, or you can work out if there's some sort of routing issue or someone's in the wrong mode or all sorts of stuff. So it's, it's handy to be able to sort of see this information because of course you're shooting a little bit blind when you send a message out on the public channel or long fast or whatever you're set to um, you don't really know that anything's actually received that message and um, when you send one out yes you can get one tip to show that maybe a node in the area has um, received that message and then potentially forwarded it on um, if it's in client mode 
uh, but you don't really know where your message has gone. So having a bit of background information um, is actually really good. And it doesn't mean we're going to use this forever. It just means that, you know, when you're trying to troubleshoot your own mesh, uh, it is quite useful to see, you know, be able to diagnose the steps of where um, where things could be going wrong. And that's what we found over here on the Hartford mesh. We've been using this for a while now. And, you know, it, it's been fantastic to work out you know, that there might be an interference problem because you can see two nodes, one one gets the message, the other one's, you know, one kilometre away, but it hasn't received that message. So why not? You know, where is where is the problem here? So you can really work out what's going on in your mesh with tools like this. Right, so this show you how you can set this up. The good thing about this is it's not the devil, it's not MQTT. Um, it is MQTT, but it's not like the conventional sort of MQTT because it won't flood your mesh or do anything drastic. It's just an uplink only. So you're only sending data to the server. It's not pinging data back from the server and, and spamming over your mesh. All it is doing, it's like it's like it's like the ham radio eye gates. Um, if you're familiar with that, it just literally gates a message, um, gates information to the internet, so other people can sort of see it on a map. It's really useful in the growth sort of stages, I think. So I'll show you how to set it up. So Liam's map basically uses its own custom server, and you can see this information here. Um, so if you click on this MQTT server, it will tell you the settings you need to insert into your node. Um, which I'll show you in a second. Um, and it's basically just this information here. And then you've got to turn uplink on your uh, long fast channel, not downlink. It won't matter if you turn downlink on because it won't, it just won't work anyway. Right, so if we dive into the MeshTastic app on my Android smartphone here, um, and we go into radio configuration, the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is connect your node to your internet router. So basically, obviously it needs to be on the internet to do this because it's uploading it to a, a central kind of server um, that Liam's running. And so we'll go to network and what you wanna do here is you wanna set your um, Wi-Fi router information. So you can see here I've set it, you have to set it manually, you can't you know, do it via a list or anything like that. So you have to know your router information, um, put that in and the, and the code. And then once you've done it, you can basically hit send and that will update your node with the Wi-Fi connection. Now it's important to realize that when you do this, your Bluetooth connection will probably be severed from your phone. You won't be able to connect via Bluetooth anymore because these nodes don't support Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Well, a lot of them don't support Wi-Fi and Bluetooth at the same time. So you need to know, you know what you're doing. If you rely on Bluetooth to connect to your node, then probably don't do this, use another node for it or something else. In the Android app, it's quite simple to connect the app, the MeshTastic app to your node um, on your local network, you can see here, there's an IP address down here, which is my node, and I can control my node via Wi-Fi. So I'm actually in the house now, this node is outside on a pole, and it works absolutely brilliantly. That's how I'm, I'm connecting to the node. So anyway, the next thing you can wanna do is obviously back into the radio configuration, and you wanna go down to MQTT. Now, so in here, if you haven't changed it, you'll just have the MeshTastic um, default settings. You don't want to turn MQTT on with those settings on. Just trust me, don't bother doing that. Just change these settings straight away um, to the settings that are shown on um, Liam's map here. You can see actually mine's slightly different. It's got MeshTastic, MeshMap.app. But anyway, basically use the settings on the website um, make sure all the other settings are right. The password, um, encryption is enabled, JSON, no, TLS, no, and then basically, um, you know, all these other news just sent a message through there on the, on the, on the long fast channel. You can see it coming. So that is basically it. And then you would just hit send and just update, uh, the information on there. When your node reboots, it will be connected to the Liam's map. Final thing you've got to do is go back to the main radio configuration, go to channels, and then once that kind of loads, it's been a bit slow today. Once you get into that, you want to go to your primary channel, long fast, tap that, and you want to have uplink enabled there. Once you enable the uplink, the information and the messages will be forwarded to Liam's server and they will be shown on that gated MQTT message um, panel on the website. And that is it, that's all you've got to do. Now, it's important to mention in this day and age, security concerns of this, 
um, because you know not everybody would want their might not want their node information shown on a public map. And I get it. I mean, I come from an amateur radio background. Most of the stuff we do is unencrypted, and you know this is the spirit of the hobby and you know X Y Z. But I do get you know the security concerns on this. So you can you can basically remove yourself from this map if you find that you've you have been added. Um, by turning off your location information. And you can, of course, contact Liam and get him to remove you from the map as well. I would suggest maybe using a non-accurate position for your location um, if you are concerned about this, because having a position on the map is cool for other users to kind of work out where they're getting to, and it's this kind of the spirit of the hobby, but obviously maybe just put your node location in a, in a local park or something so you're not disclosing your exact location. So before I go, there is another thing that I use this map for a lot, and that is search out nodes so you can just normally type in just what the nodes called and it'll bring you up a list of those nodes but what's also awesome is that you can actually search by the node ID numbers so when you get an unknown node that pops up in your list you know sometimes you might ha not have the name resolved yet you might have to wait a little while before that comes through but before that you can actually type in the ID number or the last few numbers of the ID and you'll find that you can actually locate that node um, on the list there, providing it's been gated somewhere um, by an online station. So very cool to be able to do that. And it does take a lot of the mystery out of, you know, where these stations are coming from and what you can potentially do to improve that. For example, if you know where that station is actually located now, you could maybe use a directional antenna to improve your link to that station. So it takes quite a lot of the guesswork out of this. So that's it for this one, guys. Hope you found it useful. Let me know what you think about all this in the comments. Um, come join our Discord as well the local mesh lot are on there um, and we're talking about things daily on there to sort of improve our local mesh in the sort of Hertfordshire and surrounding counties that mesh and obviously London as well so we're trying to improve things a lot um, and it really has been working great you can see from that message um, you know history that there's conversations going backwards and forwards now and it's it's really starting to work well so that's it for now have a good weekend catch you later